Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest says we were created to be feared by the devil. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Do you want to find out why and how and start doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I am so excited about this phrase. Uh, which God gave you, we are made to be feared of the devil. I mean, I mean, I, I could just say that over and over right. and over again. How did you get that revelation? I was actually praying one day and uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have made you to be feared. And I said, Lord, I don't want anybody to be afraid of me. <laughs> I want to have friends. He said, no, you don't understand. I have made you to be feared. In the garden, when he said, I put enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And I have put something inside of you that the devil fears you. And so he took me back into realizing when Lucifer was in the throne room of heaven and he was uh, called a covering cherub, he was called the morning star. Jesus, the son of God was called the bright and morning star. He was there in the glory and the presence of God. He understands the power of that glory. God has, has put his self into us, his own DNA. He's put his glory in us. And because of that, we have something on the inside that makes the enemy be fearful. But the next part of that, he says, we're also wonderfully made. That word wonder means to be full of wonder or exploration. That means that he's put in something inside of us to we should explore the greatness and explore all that God has for us and all that he's written about us. And it was written from the very beginning of time. Th th this will blow you out of the water. Tell me about the person that had bypass surgery. Yeah, they had a triple, uh, quadruple bypass it was. And uh, his father had arterial sclerosis. And they told him this bypass, bypass probably won't last more than three, three to five, five years. And because your father died, died of this, this could be fatal to you. And so his mind began to think that this, this is the way it is in my life. I'm just gonna die from this. So I you talked to him to about changing the way that you think. Your body wasn't made by God to deteriorate. You really set that thought in your body and it's begun to shut down. So he began to think, these arteries are given by God. I bless these arteries. These are good arteries. These arteries were given to me by God. I bless these arteries because they're good arteries. The blood throws through me. Now that's the last thing in the natural he'd be saying. Exactly, because he didn't feel that way. Right. And then when he went back to the doctor, he said, you've got to see this. I've heard about, I've heard about this in medical school, I've but I've never seen it one personally. He said, come here, sh let come me on, show, you. show you. He showed him on the scan. He said, this is the bypass I put in surgically. But your body grew a natural bypass around that one. And we don't know what to think about it. It was God's hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. What's your teaching? is so significant and so few Bible believers understand it. They're actually sabotaging themselves and their families. Uh, I, I heard you teaching about what we, how we sabotage our children. Right. Explain. Well, we tell them what we feel and not what their destiny is. We'll say to them, 
uh, you're, you're stupid or you shouldn't have done that. Don't be like your brother. You're going to turn out to be like Johnny down the street. And so we put within them a thought in their mind because thoughts can create pictures and pictures can create destiny. And so we've given them permission to go and be bad or go to act up instead of telling them you were made in the image of God. God had an imagination over you and he has a destiny for you and you can do anything that God has placed in your heart to do. I would say to him that you're smart, you're intelligent. It just needs to come up out of you. He has confirmed by the teacher and everybody else around him, you know, that he's not doing well. So when he hears that, that internal voice in there that says, I believe in you, especially from a parent, uh, a, a person in authority does something for them. Tell me about the uh, drug addict you were introduced wow, to. Wow, that's incredible. I was in Australia ministering and uh, before the meeting, I was there ministering on partnership with the Holy Spirit. And this uh, young lady came up to me and she said, hi, my name is Jennifer and I'm a drug addict. I've never had anybody introduce themselves like that. That reminds me though of, of uh, what is it, AA. They say, hello, I'm so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. Exactly. Now, that, that may work in AA, but what you're doing, if you only understood the science of the brain, oy vey, but go ahead. Well, I, I thought it was really strange. And so this meeting started, she sat right on the front seat in front of me and it was an irritant to me. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, how long are you gonna put up with this? And I thought, I don't know how long you've been putting up with it. And he said, I have sent you here to change the way she sees herself. So I, I went over there because I was a little bit irritated and I didn't mean to be this loud with her and got right up in the front and I said, Who said you were an addict? You're giving yourself permission to fail and be an addict. You're a daughter of the most high God. Now stop it. I got an email from her uh, three months later and she said, I went home that night for 24 years. I've used several times during the day. I didn't use any meth, any other drugs. Uh, the next day I didn't use any. I started feeling better. It's been three months. And then she sent me another email, six months. And now recently she says, I have enrolled in a Bible school and I got my driver's license back and I've been clean for an entire year. This all just started by her, you adjusting the way she thought right. about herself because she saw herself as a drug addict. And Proverbs says, as you think, so you become. And she was seeing herself in this way. And however you behold something, you become it. So she needed to get a picture of the way God saw her so she could become like what God was thinking about her. Instead of saying, I've accepted the reality. I'm a drug addict. This is my destiny. But she had another injection of a thought saying, I don't have to be this way. In fact, I've been giving myself permission to be a failure at that. This, this is your, your whole thesis statement. If you can transform your thoughts, you can transform your world. What did Jesus mean uh, uh, about the, uh, to take the kingdom of heaven by force? Yeah, Matthew 11, and sometimes people take that out of context. He's saying, John the Baptist, there's none greater than, than anybody been born of a woman than like John. And then he says, but anyone entered into the kingdom is greater than John. It's kind of like a backhanded compliment. But he said, the kingdom of God is experienced violence and the violent take it by force. And so the word violent, there's biazo, which doesn't mean militant, doesn't mean violent. It means to crowd out. So he said, if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, that you're going to invite this king in. And when he comes in, he's going to crowd out everything that doesn't have his touch, his DNA. He's going to crowd out thoughts. He's going to crowd out your ideas. He's going to create, crowd out your opinions, your cursings. And he's going to and set up his rule of thought, his rule of, of injecting into us. This is how I feel about you. Uh, you know, even science is confirming what we're talking about right now, but this is higher than science. This is the highest in the world, and so few Bible believers understand this. Science says 75% of the illnesses that people deal with come from your thinking. Let's get your thinking right. We'll be right back. <laughs> 